And welcome back to your first look at four. We are now being joined. You probably saw him here last night. TV20's political analyst David Price is now back to look at the results from yesterday. We just heard from our Deja Clayton. She was reporting on the sheriff's race. We want to start there. That is likely heading to a recount. Your thoughts on that? Um, yes, I knew that that was going to be a close one. There was a lot of crossover voting talk. And that did prove to be the case. Uh, Emory Ganey got about 10,000 more votes in Alachua County than Donald Trump did, and they're both Republicans. Um, also, this is closer to needing a manual recount. Um, the threshold for that is 0.25%, and the actual results right now are showing 029 So this is definitely a close race, and I look forward to seeing what the ultimate confirmed results are. And the third candidate though in there quickly, Marshall Coons, I mean, she made a difference in terms of voting? And yes, if you assume that 10% of her voters might have voted for Chad Scott, um, that would have definitely put uh, Scott over the threshold for uh, a recount. Winning outright. Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Staying in Alachua County, voters deciding then on who should take control over GRU. We follow that as well. They also voted on a return to at large districts. Any surprises with those? The margin surprised me. I mean, the, both of those got over 70%, and I did not think that was going to happen. I knew GRU would pass. I was not quite as sure that at large districts would return, but that they both returned with such a vengeance. I mean, that's a testament to the organization of the people who got out the vote yes on those campaigns. Of course, the courts are going to have the ultimate say on both of those issues. Yeah, not over yet. Uh, we do know also a four decade long incumbent specifically in Columbia County lost his seat. We're of course talking about County Commission District 1, Ron Williams, again newcomer Kevin Parnell winning over him. Surprised at that too or no? Um, I was not surprised at that. Um, Parnell had a greater depth of support within the district. Uh, he had more unique donors um, than Williams. And for somebody who's a 40-year incumbent, when your challenger has more donations and your own donations are rather modest, uh, even in a small community like that, um, that's saying something. You know, I think after 40 years, um, Columbia County voters in that district were looking for a change. I do want to briefly just mention the amendments, at least specifically amendments three and four, the marijuana and abortion amendment. amendment. They both did get over 50%, but not enough for that 60% threshold. You see both of these possibly coming back in another election cycle? Oh yeah. Uh, in fact, my students were asking me about that today. Um, it took two tries to get medical marijuana. Um, it's totally feasible that these amendments will be back on a ballot, and perhaps with an open seat governor's race, uh, the environment might be more favorable for, uh, for their passage. I would also quickly note that the winning amendment, or the amendment with the most uh, votes, uh, was actually Amendment 2, which really surprised me. And there was a good bit of crossover voting there as Amendment 2 got a higher percentage of the vote uh, than President Trump did statewide. Was that the fishing and hunting? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we saw that, yeah, more than more than what was needed. Mm -hmm. David Price, thank you for your analysis. We do appreciate your time here this afternoon coming back in the day after the election.